Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2. God's Word, your daily bread, the Bible, the bread of life. For May 23rd, 2023, here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the bread of life, with the goal of hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, increasing our faith and pleasing the Heavenly Father. For the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. And the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8 reads, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of the message, the basis of faith, which we preach. Hallelujah. And the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name... I will do it. Hallelujah. And finally, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7, reiterates, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And so the words of life we, are, we shall hear today, May 23rd, are Psalm 140, Proverb 23, because it's the 23rd day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, seemingly one for each day of the month. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 1, through chapter 28. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 1 through chapter 25, verse 44. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible. Copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated. Used by permission. All rights reserved. Unless otherwise noted. And there was a reading today from the Amplified Classic Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for All too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and your knowledge of the way to the way, the truth, walk in the way, the truth, and the life of those promises, that you might live in the abundance that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came, suffered, and died, and rose that we might have, as he said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. And now, Psalm 140, and it reads, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asp is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Selah. Verse 6. I said to the Lord, You are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. Verse 7. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. Selah. As for the head of those who surround me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. 
Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Verse 12. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Verse 13 and last. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name is every hero. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And now, Proverb 23. Proverb 23. Proverb 23, and it reads, When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich, because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. Verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Verse 8. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. Do not remove the ancient landmark, nor enter the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He will plead their cause against you. Verse 12. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Verse 15, My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself, yes, my innermost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Verse 17, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and guide your heart in the way. Do not mix with wine-bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Verse 23. Buy the truth, and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit, and a seductress is a narrow well. She also lies in wait as for a victim, and increases the unfaithful among men. Verse 29. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Verse 30. Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Verse 33. Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies on the top of the mast, saying, Verse 35 and last, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake, that I might seek another drink? Amen, and in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name, 
is every year. Hallelujah. And that is a wonderful description of a drunkard. And we pray in Jesus' name that these words have healed us of inter entertaining the life of drinking mixed drink and wine. Amen. And now, the New Testament, Testament reading from the book of Mark, chapter 2, and it reads, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Verse 7, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were reasoning thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk? Verse 10, But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Verse 12. Immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Verse 13. Then he went out again by the sea, and all the multitude came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? Verse 17. Then Jesus heard it, let me take that again. When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The disciples of John and the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Verse 19. And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Verse 20. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse. Verse 22. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. Verse 23. Now it happened that he went through the gra grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those with him? How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest and those also, and also gave some to those who were with him? Verse 27. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Verse 28 and last for today. 
Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed as we pray in Jesus' name, is every hero. And now, the Old Testament reading, continuing today in the book of 1 Samuel with chapter 24. The Old Testament reading, 1 Samuel chapter 24, and it reads, Now it happened, when Saul had returned from following the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheep fields by the road, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Verse 4. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Now it happened afterward that David's heart troubled him, because he had cut Saul's robe. And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Verse 7. So David restrained his servants with these words, and did not allow them to rise against Saul. And Saul got up from the cave and went on his way. Verse 8. David also arose afterward, went out of the cave, and called out to Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed down. And David said to Saul, why do you listen to the words of men who say, Indeed, David seeks your harm? Look, this day your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you into my hand in the cave, and someone urged me to kill you, but my eyes spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Verse 11. Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you, Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand, and I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Verse 12. Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. Verse 13. As the proverb of the ancient says, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. After whom? Has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? Therefore let the Lord be judge, and judge between you and me, and see and plead my cause, and deliver me out of your hand. Verse 16. So it was, when David had finished speaking these words to Saul, that Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. Then he said to David, You are more righteous than I. For you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown this day how you shall how you shall dealt well with me, how you have dealt well with me. For when the Lord delivered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him get away safely? Therefore may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Verse 20, And now I know indeed that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Therefore swear now to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not destroy my name from my father's house. So David swore to Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men went up to the stronghold. Chapter 25 Then Samuel died. And the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him, and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Moan, whose business was in Carmel, and the man was very rich. He had three thousand sheep and, and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. 
and she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. When David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Verse 7. Now I have heard that you have shearers, whose shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, young men, and they will tell you. Therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please come, give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. Verse 9. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. Verse 10. Then Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? These are my servants nowadays. There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. 11. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men when I do not know where they are from? Verse 12. So David's young men turned on their heels and went back, and they came and told him all these words. Then David said to his men, Every man gird on his sword. So every man girded on his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And about 400 men went with David, and 200 stayed with the supplies. Now one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, and he reviled them. But the men were very good to us, and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as they accompanied us while we were in the fields. They were a wall to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. Verse 18. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five sheep already dressed, five says of roasted grain, one hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Go on before me. See, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal. So it was, as she rode on the donkey, that she went down under cover of the hill. And there were David and his men coming down toward her, and she met him. Now David had said, Surely in vain I have protected all that this fellow has in, his, in the wilderness, so that nothing has missed of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. May God do so and more also to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. Now when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey, fell on her face before David, and bowed down to the ground. So she fell at his feet and said, O oh my, O oh me, on me, my lord, on me let this inequity be. And please, let your maidservant speak in your ears and hear the words of your maidservant. Please, let not my lord regard this scoundrel Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is the name, and folly is with him. But I, your maidservant, did not see the young men of my lord whom you sent. Now therefore, my lord, as the lord lives and as your soul lives, since the lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my lord be as Nabal, and now his present, and now this present which your maidservant has brought to my lord, let it be given to the young men who follow my lord. 28. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the lord will certainly make for my lord an enduring house, because my lord fights the battles of the lord, and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God, and the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord is done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, 
and has appointed your ruler, you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you, no offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Verse 32. Then David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice, and blessed are you, because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed, and from avenging myself with my own hand. For indeed, as the Lord God of Israel lives, who has kept me back from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, surely by morning, light, no males would have been left to Nabal. So David received from her hand what she had brought him, and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have heeded your voice and respected your person. Verse 36. Now Abigail went to Nabal, and there he was, holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. Therefore she told him nothing, therefore she told him nothing little or much, until morning light. Verse 37. So it was in the morning, when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became like a stone. Then it happened after about ten days that the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. So when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil, for the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and proposed to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. Then she arose, bowed her head to the earth, and said, Here is your maidservant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So Abigail arose, Abigail rose in haste and made, rode on a donkey, attended by five of her maids, maidens, and she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinam, Ahinam of Jezreel, and so both of them were his wives. But Saul had given Michael, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was from Galam. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in Jesus' name, is every hero. Hallelujah and glory to God. And the book of Psalm, chapter 107, verse 20 reads, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. And the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, chapter 53, verse 5 through 6 reads, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we, your children, come before you to say thank you that you laid on your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, the iniquity that we all deserved. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you forgive us for any trespasses we have committed in the name of Jesus Christ, that you accept the wounds the bruises, the chastisement, and the stripes of your Holy Son, Jesus, when you look on us and forgive us our sins and heal our bodies where they are sick. Heal our spirits, heal our families in the name of Jesus Christ, our marriages, our storehouses, the work of our hands. Father, let us be healed by the stripes of your Holy Son, Jesus. And as we have received this word, we receive in the name of Jesus Christ your healing. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.